In this video, we're going to take a look at a topic related to graph isomorphisms. Hi, here's a question. Hi again, I've heard about graph isomorphisms, but what is a graph automorphism? Good question. A graph automorphism is an isomorphism from the graph to itself. We're going to take a look at that in this video. Thanks. See ya. The automorphisms of a graph describe its symmetries. So before we get into the details, let's start by just taking a look at a simple graph and describing the symmetries. We're going to start with this graph here. We've drawn the triangle, and I'll label the vertices A, B, and C so that we have reference points. Now an obvious line of symmetry is the dotted green line that goes from A down in between B and C. If you were to flip the graph over that axis, you would see you end up with the same graph. All that happens is that the position of B and C gets swapped, but the structure of the graph remains unchanged. Similarly, the dotted red line that goes from B into between A and C is also a line of symmetry. And again, the dotted blue line is again a line of symmetry. There's some more symmetry here. What you could do is rotate the whole graph by 120 degrees clockwise. You'd end up again with the same structure. If you rotate 120 degrees in the other direction, counterclockwise, you also get the same structure. Now let's consider one of these symmetries in more detail. Let's pick the green symmetry line. If we look closely, when we flip over the green symmetry line, we are mapping the vertex A to itself, to A. And we are mapping the vertex B to C, and we're mapping the vertex C to B. So we can call this permutation map alpha, a map from the vertex set of G to the vertex set of G, which does the following. It maps A, B, and C to A, C, and B, respectively. Another way to write exactly that is the notation just B and C inside of brackets. The brackets tell you that B gets mapped to C, and then C gets mapped back to B. Notice that we didn't include A here. We could have included A on its own by itself in brackets, and that would really emphasize the fact that A is fixed. And sometimes that's exactly what we do. You'll see more of this notation later on in the video. Observe that what we've described here is really a permutation of the vertex set which preserves adjacency and non-adjacency. So that is really an isomorphism, but from G back to itself. That's the idea behind an automorphism. Now we're ready for a more formal definition. We know that an automorphism of a graph is an isomorphism from the graph to itself. Thus, an automorphism is a permutation alpha from the vertex set to the vertex set, such that alpha of u, alpha of v is an edge if and only if uv is an edge. This condition is what's telling you that adjacency and non-adjacency are preserved. This means that two vertices are adjacent after the map if and only if they were adjacent before the mapping. Here are some important facts about automorphisms. 1. If alpha and beta are both automorphisms of a graph, then alpha composed with beta is also an automorphism of that graph. 2. The identity map is always an automorphism of a graph. The identity map is what fixes every vertex. 3. If alpha is an automorphism of a graph, then alpha inverse is also an automorphism of a graph. These three facts, together with the fact that composition of permutations is associative, tells you that the set of all automorphisms of a graph forms a group under the operation of composition. And this group is denoted by the notation ought g for the automorphism group of g. Let's revisit our example, and we'll take a look at all of the automorphisms of this graph, which is K3. So first of all, the identity is always an automorphism. The identity in this case just maps A, B, and C to A, B, and C. The other notation for that is just A in brackets, B in brackets, C in brackets. That tells you that A, B, and C are all fixed. Next we have the green flip, and that one we've looked at before. It looks like this. So it maps B and C to each other, but it fixes A. The red reflection, alpha 2, maps B to itself and it flips A and C. So those are the two notations for it as well. The blue reflection, let's call it alpha 3, fixes C and maps A and B to each other. Again, we have two ways of writing this notation. It just depends on which notation you're more comfortable with. I like cycle notation, but sometimes it's useful to have the other notation which tells you really what vertex 
is getting mapped to what other vertex, if you want to see it visually like that. Next, the 120 degree clockwise rotation maps A to B, B to C, and C back to A. The rotation in the other direction can also be written down as a permutation, and we'll call that one R2. Okay, so now we've listed down all the symmetries of the graph in terms of the mappings that they are. So that means that the automorphism group of K3 is equal to the identity and also alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, and R1 and R2. This group is isomorphic to the symmetric group of order 3 factorial, which is 6. There are 6 things in this group. Let's look at some more examples. This green graph on 5 vertices obviously has a line of symmetry, that blue dotted line. What does that line of symmetry tell us? Well, it maps 3 to itself, and it swaps 2 and 4, and it also swaps 1 and 5. So that's the mapping. Of course, we also have the identity automorphism, which just fixes each vertex. So the automorphism group of this graph is just those two elements, the identity and that single map that we found. Let's try another example. Here we have a red graph on these six vertices. We notice that there's not a lot of symmetry happening here, and in fact, the identity map is the only automorphism of this example. We observe that the more automorphisms a graph has, the more symmetries it has. So the most symmetric a graph could get is the example of a complete graph, where all of the edges exist. That means that any possible permutation, and there are n factorial of those, is an automorphism. In other words, the automorphism group of the complete graph on n vertices is isomorphic to the symmetric group of order n factorial. Let's consider another example, which has quite a few symmetries, but not as many as a complete graph. Let's use the cycle on four vertices. So I recommend that you pause the video and try to write down all of the automorphisms of this graph. Are you ready? We're going to start writing them down. We can start by looking at the possible rotations of this graph. If we rotate it by 90 degrees, we get the same structure, so that will give us an automorphism. If we rotate it by 180, again we get one, and by 270, again we get one. If we rotate it by 360 degrees, that brings it right back to the beginning, as if we rotated by zero degrees, which is really just the identity. So we'll start by writing down the identity, and then we write down the 90 degree rotation, that's that map, then the 180 degree rotation, that map, and finally the 270 degree rotation, that map. Okay, that gives us our four rotations. Now let's look at possible reflections. We could reflect over this diagonal line, and that would map 1 and 3 to each other, but it would fix 2 and 4. Similarly, we could reflect over this other diagonal, and that would do the other thing. It would map 2 and 4 to each other, but it would fix 1 and 3. Now there are two more flips that we could do. We could flip over the vertical line, which looks like this permutation, or we could flip over the horizontal line, which looks like that permutation. And that's all we can do. So this set of eight automorphisms, together under composition, forms the group, the automorphism group of the cycle on four vertices. Notice that it had four rotations and then four reflections. In fact, this particular group is isomorphic to the group D4, which is a dihedral group. Now, if you don't know a lot about group theory, that's okay. The important thing to keep in mind is that the more automorphisms a graph has, the more symmetric it is. Now that we've had some practice finding the automorphisms of a graph by hand, I want to show you how to do this using Sage. Here I am inside of Sage, and I'm using Sage in their Sage Math Cloud. What I'm going to do is start with our first example, which is K3. That's the graph, which is the complete graph on three vertices. And I'm going to ask it to show us the graph, and then to list out all of the elements in the automorphism group. Let's see what happens when I run it. Okay, it gives us the triangle, and it decided to label the vertices 0, 1, and 2. And if you look carefully at the automorphism group, you'll see all of the elements that we found. The identity, and the flips, and the rotations. They're all there. Okay, so far so good. Let's try another example. Let's look at the one we just saw, which was the cycle on four vertices. So we'll put in the cycle on four vertices, and again, we'll ask it to show it to us, and to list all of the elements in the automorphism group, and there they are. And you can go ahead and check them for yourself. So make sure that you give yourself lots of examples to practice with, and then you could use Sage as a test to make sure you did it right. Now here's an important fact, and it's not too difficult to see. 
for any graph G, the automorphism group of that graph is isomorphic to the automorphism group of the complement graph. This is because an automorphism is mapping in a way that preserves adjacency and non-adjacency. So the complement, non-adjacency means adjacency, and adjacency means non-adjacency. That's why it works. Another important theorem is the following. If G is a graph of order n, then the order of the automorphism group of G divides n factorial. Moreover, the automorphism group has order equal to n factorial if and only if the graph is the complete graph of order n or the empty graph of order n, which just consists of n vertices that are all isolated. Perhaps one of the most incredible results about automorphisms is the following result proved by Frucht in the 1930s. He showed that for every finite group, there exists a finite graph whose automorphism group is isomorphic to that group that you chose. Pretty powerful. Whether or not you're familiar with group theory, I hope that this video has given you a good sense for what the automorphism group of a graph is. If you want to play around in Sage using automorphism groups or any other things to do with graph theory, go ahead, it's fun. Take a look at these videos for related topics and I'll see you next time.